Christmas is right around the corner. I know, I know, Thanksgiving hasn't happened yet. It's okay, but we need to get ahead of the game, especially for those of you that like to add that little touch of something a little handmade to maybe your gift cards, your gift tags, your greeting cards, or if you bullet journal, what we're gonna do today would be perfect for that as well. So if we haven't met yet, I'm Viv with Art with Viv, and today we're gonna be just doing simple Christmas doodles that you can add that homemade special touch to anything you wanna give this Christmas. So let's go to the studio. Now, as I usually start out, I already have everything sketched out. I'm gonna go ahead and put a shadow down both sides of the candy cane and let that dry. And I'm just using a watery mixture of blue. You could use Payne's gray or some other color. I'm just using blue. Put it down both sides. That's gonna give your shadows just a little bit more depth. Let that dry. And then you're gonna to wanna to come pop over while that's drying to your poinsettias. You wanna wet each petal of the poinsettia flower and just drop in some nice deep red of your choice, whatever you like. And then um, let the water do the work. Just make sure that you don't paint it a solid red. Let some of that white of the paper show through so that you'll have a highlight. And it just gives it a little bit more dimension. Make sure you leave that center part open because we're gonna come back and put in a nice yellow center. Now for each one of the candy cane stripes. I'm just going on either side and painting in a nice bright candy cane red and then taking the tip of my brush and blending it toward the center. But I'm leaving a nice white stripe down the center of that candy cane to look like the highlight. Now on the white stripes, if you wanna come back later and paint those in with a little extra blue, you can, totally up to you. Just remember to leave that highlight going down the center to make it look a little bit more three-dimensional. And when I want it to be a little bit darker on the edges, I was just adding a little bit more concentrated red right on the very edges. That makes it have a nice shadow. And now you can see why I put that blue there first because that actually deepens that shadow. You could probably even go with a darker blue. I was being conservative. I didn't wanna to get too much into the blue and then it looked purple when I put the red on top of it, but I think it would have been fine. Now I am going to do that second layer of petals on the poinsettia the same exact way. You wanna wet the petals and then drop in your red. Now I went with a darker red for those back petals. And as you see, I'm painting a little bit too much in there. So for that excess, excess excuse me, got my tongue wrapped around my eye teeth, can't see what I'm saying. For that excess paint that I have in there, what I'm doing is I'm dabbing my brush off to get the excess water off, then coming back and picking that paint up and then wiping that excess paint on my paper towel. That's called lifting if you're new to watercolor and it lets you have a nice little highlight. You can do that while it's still wet. As a matter of fact, that's the only way you're gonna be able to do it while it's still wet unless you wanna scrub your paper a little bit, but the easiest way is to do it while it's still wet. Now you get all of those petals in, put in a little bit of yellow in that center, now, if you'd like to get extra bonus content like the practice sheet for this and the supply list, then consider joining my Patreon. It's only $5 a month. And for $5 a month, you get a whole lot of bonus content, coloring pages, planner art, printables, uh, early access to YouTube videos, all kinds of little mini tutorials and things like that. So it's really a great value for $5 a month. You get a lot. And you can find that on patreon.com forward slash art with Viv. And I hope to see you in the inside. Now I've mixed up a nice Christmas green and I'm just giving these poinsettias some leaves. I went with the pale green first and while it's still wet, I'm dropping in a nice dark green. I left a little bit of the paper shining through down the center just to give that leaf a little highlight. Now we're going to move on to the pine bough with some pine cones. I've got several shades of green mixed up and I even am going to have a darker one in a minute. You'll see that. But I am alternating 
like the really pale yellow green with that mid-tone Christmas green. And all I'm doing is just doing tiny, tiny little brush strokes, not pressing hard on the paper. I'm just using the very tip end of the brush to do these light, like hair-like brush strokes and just sort of overlapping them, but making them go in the same direction. We're not getting crazy. And then once you get all those down your stem, just take some light brown, do some dots in the shape of a cone, just sort of alternate them down, then add some darker brown while it's still wet for the for the shadows in there. And you have a simple little pine cone, take that same brown and put it in the stems. Easy peasy, I decided this one needed another little stem out here just to balance it out a little bit. I'm also gonna come back in with some darker green, some really deep green, and just add that on top of some of these other uh, pine needles that we've already painted. And there you go. You have a cute little pine bough. Now we're gonna do some anise seed, seed pod. You'll wanna paint the whole thing with a nice light yellowy brown, except for the seed, paint around the actual seed that's down in that pod. You'll want to paint around each one of those, leave those dry. And once you get all those painted up, you're gonna come back in. Well, first you're gonna let that dry. Don't, don't get ahead of me. Don't let me get ahead of you. <laughs> You're gonna paint all those. You're gonna let that dry completely and then you're gonna come in with a deep dark brown and you are gonna paint around those seeds but you're gonna leave a thin margin of that yellow brown on either side and that is the husk or the hole of the seed pod. The seed pod. What you're actually doing is painting the shadows in. So you'll see now that I've painted a few more how it's supposed to look. These are just shadows around that seed because those seeds are down in that little pod. So just be sure to leave some of that pale yellow that you painted right around the edges and right in the center of the pod. And make sure you put that dark brown inside of there around each one of the seeds. So once you get that done, you can let that dry. As it's drying though, you can go with a medium, maybe a burnt sienna, but a brown that's in between the darkest brown you have and that light yellow brown and just do the outer hole of the little seed pod. Just follow around on the very outside. Don't cover up your yellow brown, the lightest brown. You'll want to go right on the outside edge of that. So now you've got a mid-brown, a light brown, and then a dark brown by the seed. So that's how that's going to look, and it looks pretty good. And just continue to do that. Then mix you up a nice bright yellow and add some brown to it. Paint each one of the seeds that color. Leave a little bit of the white of the paper. And that's just giving you that sweet little highlight. All of these little doodles can be used for so many different things. You can put them on tags for gift tags, with just to give that little homemade touch. You could put these on greeting cards, you know, make them bigger, or you could do a cluster of them, like use different one, you know, different doodles, several of these doodles, and make a design out of it on a Christmas card. Uh, you could paint your own Christmas wrapping paper if you're that ambitious. I'm not that ambitious, but you could. So now we've moved on to the orange slice. I've got a nice, really bright yellow. I've got a little bit of orange mixed in there. And what I'm doing is just doing tiny strokes across each, each section, letting some of the strokes touch, but leaving plenty of the white of that paper to be the glistening juiciness of the slice. Toward the center, I'm putting a darker orange just so it has a nice shadow in there. I'm making sure that I avoid painting over the crisscrosses, the sections. I want to leave those white. I want to leave the center white. And I also want to leave that around the wheel. I'm going to call it a wheel around the slice white. And on the very edge of that white rim, we're taking some brownish orange. And that's going to be the peel, the orange rind. And paint that all around. And then take some of the darker colors. Put in some shadows around each section just to sort of make those more defined. Add a little bit of, 
of that deeper brownish orange in some of the spots. You could also blend a little bit of that out along the edge with some clean water so that it's not quite so harsh. Totally up to you, it's your painting. And just continue to add shadows here and there where you feel like they need to be added, defining each one of those sections, but making sure that you leave the, the white part white, those sections that all connect in the middle, those little lines, it looks like a little wagon wheel. Make sure that you leave those white, don't paint over those. And then once you get all your shadows in the way that you want it, and you've got several layers of oranges, but you also have let plenty of that white show through too to be the, the highlights. You'll wanna paint that center of the orange. Take, take some of that darker orange, put some dots in there, and that gives you the texture, you know, the bumpy texture of the orange rind. Next, we're gonna jump over here to the holly. These are easy. You are just going to wet the holly with clean water, drop in a yellow green, and then while it's still wet, drop in your darker green. And you can pick whatever greens you want. It's up to you. But I um, encourage you to do it while it's still wet, like put one color down and then while that color's still wet, drop it in there and let the water do the work for you. Let that mix and mingle. It gives a really nice effect wet on wet and just continue that as you go down once you get all of these little the lighter green leaves finished then you can come back in once they're completely dry and then with a darker green more and more of a flat green you're going to go straight onto dry paper you'll see that in just a second as soon as we finish up these last few little leaves you can get you a brown Paint in your stem a nice dark brown, add the, some little stems to the leaves so that they connect to your mid branch. Get that dark green, make sure those first leaves you painted are dry and just paint the leaves directly onto dry paper so that they look like they're a little further away. They're behind these lighter leaves and they can be fairly flat. It, it's okay if they don't have a lot of dimension because they are more in shadow. Once you get your um, back back leaves you know your shadow leaves painted in just get a little bit of red on the tip of your brush and just paint tiny circles and leave a little bit of the white of the paper as a highlight so you'll have little white dots in the center of those berries to make them look like they're glistening next up we got the little um, Christmas stocking and I am painting directly on dry paper I'm just gonna go ahead and paint the red all the way around and then just with clean water blend it toward the center so that will give it make it look like it's darker on the edges so it gives it a little bit of dimension and where I want it to be a little bit darker I'm just gonna add some more concentrated red so that is coming out good we're gonna let that dry and then we're gonna paint this ornament purple I've got two shades of purple out and that's what I'm gonna work with. And I'm gonna do wet on wet and just pay attention to where I have my highlights. The only thing I wish I had made my highlight smaller on this one. So you'll drop in that color, let the water do the work for you. You can blend some of it out with the tip of your brush so that it comes down and meets that highlight. And then you can mix some other colors into your purple, like I've got some permanent rose right there that I've mixed in with my purple to make a little bit more red violet. And then you can go and get your Windsor violet and that will be your darker shadow. And then just sort of drop it in there while it's still wet. We are working pretty fast, wet on wet, letting that just seep and, and mingle the way it's gonna want to. And I'm just taking some clean water and blending that to the edge of the ornament, blending the edges of the highlight. Again, I wish I'd made my highlight smaller. It's a little big for me. While that's dry, drying, I'm just taking a bluish gray. I'm gonna come over here and just do some little dibs and dabs just to make it look like this is a fuzzy stocking cuff. The cuff of the stocking is nice and fuzzy. So we're just gonna put some shadow work in there with that bluish gray fill in the top so it looks like it's open. Put a little hanger on it because we gotta hang it by our fireplace and there you go. We're gonna let that dry now and come back to our ornament here. It is completely dry. 
and we are going to make some stripes on it give it some decorations i first went in there wet on dry i did not like the way it looked so i started lifting some of the color back up and wiping it on my paper towel and so i decided on my next stripes i'm going to go ahead and wet those stripes first and then drop the color in and it gave it a much better effect i like that effect a whole lot better so you you are always learning i'm still learning i'm learning as i go and as long as you are alive and painting, you are going to learn something every time you stick that brush onto your paper. I promise you, you are going to learn something. So just drop in those colors for your stripes. They're looking pretty good. I like, I like how this is coming out. And I think I need one more stripe down there toward the bottom. I'm just going to go ahead and paint it in kind of faintly with some watery purple clean up the edges here just do like a really fine line with the tip of my brush to define the edges of this Christmas ornament I really like how it's coming out I got some nice yellow a nice golden yellow and I'm gonna do the little hanger with that and then come back in with some darker browns and make the shadows and I'm doing that while it's still wet so that they'll blend nicely now, after everything is dry, I went back with my gel pen and just added some details, a few veins into my poinsettia, and a few little highlights here and there. But the biggest thing I wanted to do is make a design on my, my, my little stockings look a little plain. He's looking a little plain, so I decided to do some dots and some lines just to give it some decoration. You could do stars, you could do snowflakes, you could do bigger circles. You could maybe color the heel and the toe in a different, paint it a different color or color it completely in with the white gel pen so that you've got a white toe and a white heel. It's up to you. I added some highlights here and there to like the bow and to the orange slice. And there you go. You have got some nice Christmas doodles that you can make into lots of different kinds of art so i hope you enjoyed this thank you for watching don't forget to check out my patreon give me a thumbs up give me a comment and share this with a friend i really appreciate all your support thank you so so much